Well, hello again and welcome back to Gosforth. Yeah, it's been a couple of weeks, hasn't it? Uh, now, I'd prefer to have done this video from my kitchen table, truth be told, bearing in mind the rain. Uh, so we'll call this wet weather training ahead of Milan on Tuesday because the forecast doesn't look too great going out there either. Uh, now, a new part of town for you expats. This is uh, Elgi Road, which is a fairly desirable part of town. So I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll make my presence on here fairly brief and we'll have a little, uh, a little wander down towards the high street. Now, I was at Eddie Howe's press conference earlier today day uh, previewing tomorrow's game at home to Brentford and there's plenty to unpick from it. We'll start with the story which I'm going to put on screen now which came about towards the, the very end of Eddie's press conference really and it had been sort of fairly bland to that point in, in many respects and then he was asked a question about uh, criticism and the noise around Newcastle during the past two weeks on the back of uh, three straight defeats and Eddie gave a, a really strong response it was almost as if he'd been waiting for the question he said you know he's immune to that noise he doesn't listen to it uh, if uh, if he feels he's underperformed or he feels his team is underperformed he doesn't need anybody on the outside to tell him that and as I say you know, I thought it was a very strong answer and you know from our point of view it gave us great copy so go eddie uh now i wouldn't uh i wouldn't say what he said was was needless that that's far too strong a word i thought what he said was was perfectly fair but was it really necessary at this stage well it, it brings the the question back on itself in many ways and this is something supporters i think have been talking about uh during the week as well and certainly radio stations and we'll come on to that but we're we're debating the debate in many ways you know the argument is is Eddie Howe uh, under pressure or should there even be a conversation about Eddie Howe being under pressure now the answer to, uh, to to the question is he well no you know they've lost three that's okay I made my feelings well known after the, uh, the, game, the game down at Brighton we're allowed to analyse and we're allowed to criticise performances in isolation but that doesn't then have to be extrapolated into something far bigger and you know Eddie, Eddie Howe's under the pump and, and all the rest of it that's just not true God, the, the guy's got so much goodwill in the back in such a tremendous body of work uh, that that isn't really the, the, the debate and uh, you then turn on the, the radio yesterday at TalkSport and Simon Jordan was asked about a story in the press concerning uh, Newcastle owner Yasser al Ramayan lending his support to uh, Eddie Howe now as far as I can see talks about what we're talking about a story that didn't exist really you know there were no uh no quotes Yasser al Ramayn hadn't come out and felt the need to to give you know that code vote of confidence to Eddie but uh Simon Jordan had said that it had probably come about because uh Machiavellian journalists like Craig Hope had asked the question now me Machiavellian would I ever use my position to to influence or shine a light on anything to do with the Newcastle manager yeah uh now, but you know, my own answer to that is uh, that it's a it, it, it's a noise that has come about on the back of, of three straight defeats. Which, if you're a Premier League manager in your Champions League club, uh, that is that is to be expected. But in terms of the the bigger picture, you know. I'm a national journalist working for the Daily Mail. Are Newcastle on the carousel of crisis clubs right now? Well, absolutely not. No, there isn't a, a want or a demand from from the guys on my desk to be ringing me up. You know what the hell's going on at Newcastle? Can you tell us where it's going wrong? Not at all. But there still is analysis. You know, we're still allowed to do videos like this and and uh, and, and and try and get to the bottom of why they didn't perhaps perhaps perform as well as they as they can do and what they should have done down at Brighton and why they have lost three games on the on the spin now. We go into Brentford tomorrow and you fully expect them to, to, to probably go and win that you know they, they, they've shown whenever they have had a little blip uh, they have they have always responded they have always found a way and knowing what we know of Eddie and this group of players you would fully back them to do that now now fail to do that uh, and then okay that then maybe then you're getting the the, the, the phone calls from uh, fr from your desk in London asking asking what's going on and uh, and having to make more serious phone calls about the, the the view of the board with, with, with regards Eddie but we're, we're not there yet and I think there's been there's been noise around the noise you know I, I use that for want of a better phrase uh, and I think Eddie today was probably aware of that uh, and he just felt a need to a little need to say something I had no issue uh, with his uh, with his answer at all but I just do think at the moment we're not we're not really quite there yet to be to be having these discussions are you maybe as well screaming at the screen saying well why have you just spent the last two and a half minutes talking about it you know we're journalists it was the best line to, to come out with Eddie's press conference today so I think it's only fair that I, I give my opinion uh, and my my reaction to it now uh, what else was that a day well i thought it was very telling when uh when eddie spoke about bruno gamaras as well and of course bruno has gone away 
and he's had two what seems like two very good games for Brazil and it was uh, myself who asked the question you know I said uh, what can this you know what can this do for him and while Eddie was positive I think hidden within there was also an admission that Bruno's form hasn't been great so far you know he said he hopes that there's sparks him back into life that he can rediscover his very best levels which by extension suggests that the Bruno hasn't quite been where where Eddie wants him to be and I think we'd all agree with that you know central to Newcastle's dip in performance the last it's only really the last game and a half has been you know Bruno's own performance as well and I was down at the game at Brighton and you know very quickly after 5, 10, 15 minutes you could see and I think I said this on the last video uh, he didn't really appear to be just moving like he, he, he normally does now he's gone away with Brazil maybe that's what he needed because if Newcastle are to to rediscover that best form he he certainly is as is the last 18 month uh, with Bruno in the team has proven you know the stats back this up your naked eye backs this up you know uh, he, he really is a, a tremendous footballer a charismatic influence on the team what happens on the pitch what happens in the stands uh, so yeah fully expect him to start uh, tomorrow and Eddie will be looking for him to, to take that momentum from the international break into the game now uh, what else was there yeah well, we probably don't expect to see Sandro Tonali tomorrow he's returned with a, uh, with a thigh injury it didn't sound too serious i'd imagine eddie would keep him back tomorrow with the hope of playing him when they return to milan on tuesday elliot anderson uh and sven botman they've trained this week they should be fine for the uh, for the game for the game more against brentford and which brings us on to that in you know what 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 pressure is there well there's always pressure you know it, it's Newcastle united uh the the champions league club now but for me Yes, the, the the result is is, is important. Or well, of course, it's important. But that is on the the result is looked at and viewed, and conclusions are drawn on the result beyond hindsight. For me, what I would want to, to see is someone who covers the club, and you know, you'd like to think your your analysis and your opinion, your perspective is more nuanced. I think we've just got to see a reaction and uh, and just a, a, a better display, really, because that one down at Brighton, as I committed on the record, was was just so far removed from what we've come to expect. Of an Eddie, of an Eddie Howe team, really unrecognisable was the the word I used, and that would be the that would be the concern. Because I never thought I would see that level of lacklusterness in part, disorganisation. I think you need to see a response, and this is the point I go back to. Even when Newcastle haven't won games under Eddie Howe, even during the early part of his tenure, you could see they were going to. You go back to the start of last season, they won one in the first seven, but you knew it would turn. They were playing well enough, they were creating chances, they just needed that little that little break, and so it happened in the finish before the World Cup on a, a absolutely tremendous run, didn't they? So I think, yeah, tomorrow, above all else, it's about that that reaction in terms of uh, in terms of performance. Now, what changes will Eddie Howe make for tomorrow's game? I do expect some. Uh, I must admit, and two players uh, I would anticipate coming in would be Callum Wilson, who of course has signed a new one-year contract extension, and Sean Longstaff as well. And uh, Sean Longstaff does. Uh, Sean Longstaff is a very good player, but he tends to play brilliantly when he's not in the team as well. In terms of, uh, I say that tongue in cheek, it highlights what he brings and what Newcastle miss. And uh, giving he's had now two weeks to build that fitness, and he's been one of the the twelve players who, who remain behind uh, working with Eddie on the on the training ground. Yeah, I think Sean will come in. For, for Sandro Tonali uh, and it's needed I think Tonali's injury has maybe made it easier for Eddie in terms of in terms of making that switch uh, because I think it was one he had to make anyway again you know down at Brighton that midfield three of Bruno Tonali Joe Linton just didn't it didn't work you know again you know call it criticism analysis what you want it didn't work and Eddie was asked about that again today uh, and he was a little bit he said you know after and it's a fair point he said after week one everyone was saying how wonderful the the midfield was and I think he said you know it, it worked like a dream a couple of weeks later there's more there's more inspection people are picking things apart but he himself has to remain convinced that the the plan he has for for those three players in there will work long term going forward and Eddie Howe's the manager so you've got to uh, you've got to trust him on that but again doesn't mean we can't uh, doesn't mean we can't pick things apart and we certainly did after after Brighton with regards to that midfield and the conclusion we all came back to was that Sean Longstaff should uh, and, and, and needs to play and I think we'll see that tomorrow as for Wilson well I was asked during the week someone said to me uh, with you know, there was word earlier in the week about Wilson's contract and someone had asked me you know is he is he actually worth another year uh, I think it was during a, a daily mail a daily mail Q&A which I done 
And I, I said, yes, absolutely. And it was put to me, well, he's injury prone. He's not injury prone anymore. Eddie Howe has actually found a way, if we're, if we're being fair, Wilson hasn't been injured since March time, end of February, the Carabao, you know, played, came on the Carabao Cup, finally hasn't been, he hasn't been injured or even out of form since then. He finished last season really strongly, even though he started this season on the bench. I thought when he, uh, whenever he's come on, he, he scored goals, he's looked hungry. And I just think when you need a result tomorrow, uh, and you need a player to, to, to inspire the crowd, to, to get behind you and for, for everything to be pulled in the same direction. I think the charisma of Callum Wilson, someone like that, and he'll have a point to prove being away with England as well, coming back. Uh, I would put Wilson in from the start tomorrow and I think, I think Eddie, will, uh, Eddie will do that too. Now, how do I see this one going? Uh, I think if you've watched the, uh, the earlier moments in this video, I fully expect a response and I would fully go with, uh, with home victory. I must admit, traveling down to Brighton and some viewers of this will testify, I think that uh, I'd predicted a draw on the record, I think, when, I, when I'd done the video, but uh, I, I'd spoken to a couple of people on the way down to Brighton and I, I'd said I, I just had a bad feel about it. There was something about the just the, the noise that, that, that week, you know, what had happened with Jamal Lascelles, Bruno's online spat the previous week on social media, the manner of the defeat to Liverpool. Uh, it, it, it just felt as if things were conspiring a little bit against Newcastle and, and to that end, the, the Brighton performance and, and result for me wasn't, wasn't a massive surprise. Uh, now, the two-week break, I know Eddie said he wanted the game straight away. I don't think the two-week break would have done them any any harm at all. Just in sort of cleansing that that sort of ill sort of ill ill feeling which which had began to began to gather really. Uh, so yeah, uh, big one tomorrow. Now if they, if they don't win, this brings us back to the the conversation at the very top of this video, and it was a question I asked of Darren Eels when we had a visit at the training ground uh, a few weeks back, and I said, you know, no one knows what these Saudi owners are like so far. They've only experienced up, 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 and you know if they do hit a rocky run, as we all expected them to do at some point this season, perhaps even the, the opening weeks of the season, given the the fixtures, and so it's proved, you know, what what will they be like? And uh, Darren's answer was, you know, very supportive of Eddie but it also really when we broke when we broke it down afterwards it was almost like well, well we, we don't know I, th I think in some respects because they haven't we haven't actually seen that yet and certainly four losses on the spin uh, would, would 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 bring those questions home so as we'll see I don't expect that to be the case but but nonetheless events of today words analysis everything else uh, it makes tomorrow an absolutely huge game again uh, going away to three days later to, to, to Milan as well so loads of coverage to come over the next few days uh, across all Daily Mail platforms as well I'll put the links below in the description as I said uh, please hit like please hit subscribe on this video as well it all really helps I can't wait to bring you uh, more analysis more coverage more copy uh, from the Brentford game and from Milan in a few days time I'll be on a six o'clock flight uh, via Amsterdam I think it is on Monday morning so please say hello if you are going out there safe travels too and uh, yeah before then I, I'm getting carried away you know if this was Eddie Howe he'd be saying I'm only focusing on Brentford and so should I be too because there's going to be a, a lot to get stuck into there I'll see you again in yeah about 24 hours time to, to reflect on that game take care guys thank you again for watching bye bye